The countdown to Pokemon Day 2024 is on as Pokemon announced earlier this week that a new Pokemon Presents is going to be airing on the 27th, which is this upcoming Tuesday at 9 a.m. EST. There's a bit of uncertainty going on in regards to what Pokemon is even planning to release this year, coming off of the heels of Scarlet and Violet. But regardless, for this video, I want to give some of my personal predictions as to what we could see from Tuesday's presentation. Even though I don't really know what to expect, otherwise this is very much a massive shot in the dark. Keep in mind that this video will not be covering any leaks or rumors as I don't like leaks and rumors. And so, everything in this video will be pure personal speculation. Nonetheless, don't forget to leave a like on the video and subscribe if you're new here. And let's just get started. Oh, and one more thing, if anything does leak between this video and Tuesday, I advise not posting any spoilers in the comments so that people like me can be surprised and not get spoiled. Thank you, and enjoy the rest of the video. So, first things first, the presentation is said to be around 25 minutes long, so we gotta keep that length in mind when talking about what we could be seeing. However, we can look back at previous Pokemon Presents and make our predictions based on those. And usually the first thing that gets talked about are the live service games. Unite, Go, Cafe Remix, Masters, and finally Sleep. Though last year they did spread out the live service games, which did kind of interrupt the basing in my opinion. Regardless, we're bound to get content updates for all of those five games, most of them likely revolving around Pokemon Day. I'm just gonna get Pokemon Unite out of the way first since I don't even play that game. But I could see Coridon being added considering that Miraidon was already announced to be coming to the game on Tuesday. Though it's possible that Miraidon is the only Unite related thing that could be talked about. And that's fine too. Like I said though, I know nothing about Unite as I don't play it. So we're just gonna quickly move on. For Cafe Remix, I don't see anything big coming. The most I can see are more Pokemon, some kind of shiny event, and some more one minute cooking stages. Other than that, I don't really have much to say about Cafe Remix though, which honestly sucks because the support for this game has not been the greatest as of late in my opinion. Last year, Pokemon Go made the rather confusing decision of adding the Paldea starters before the Galar ones. I kind of get it since Scarlet Violet was fresh on literally everyone's mind at the time, but to go out of order like this regardless is just bizarre to me. That said, I do think this is finally the year to add the last remaining starters into the game, which boosts the chances to find them in the wild for a limited time, like what we got for previous generations of starters in Pokemon Go. As for Pokemon Masters, this game tends to do the half-year anniversaries in February in addition to the full-year ones in the summer, and I have no doubt in my mind that it won't be any different this time around either. They'll probably have the usual offerings, like being able to scout 100 sync pairs for free, giving out some free non-paid gems, add some new special alts for the occasion, etc etc. Considering that Gladion just got a new alt not too long ago, I can see them recapping that too. All in all, it's probably gonna be pretty typical stuff for Masters, I'd say. Lastly for the live service games is Pokemon Sleep, which just released last summer. Granted, I don't have the best confidence for what we could see from Sleep for Pokemon Day, but I can also see some kind of event specifically for Pokemon Day being featured too. The way I'm seeing it right now is an increased chance of finding Pikachu, with Pikachu getting a new alt like the Halloween and Christmas events, and maybe even a slightly increased chance of finding a shiny Pikachu. I don't know what else I could even see from Sleep on Pokemon Day, but this does sound like the most realistic possibility to me. Once all of the live service games are finished, I think this second segment is where we're going to see more info on Worlds 2024, which is being held in Honolulu, Hawaii. The main things that I can see from this are some of the activities being offered outside of the main competition, like what we saw last year in Yokohama. This is also where we will likely get the official dates for Worlds 2024, which will likely be sometime in August, like it usually is. Last year, we did also get an animated series based on the TCG leading up to Worlds 2023 called Pass to the Peak, and I would love to see another animated series like that for this year's Worlds as well. Will it be based on the TCG again? No idea. But 
I would still like to see something like that for this year as well, as I do think it is a really neat idea. Speaking of animated series, we'll likely get a very brief mention of the English stuff for Horizons, since that has still yet to come to Netflix here in the US, which just continues to baffle the living crap out of me. How can the release schedule be this bad? Horizons has been airing in Japan for almost an entire year at this point, and the US still doesn't have an official way of watching it legitimately. This is an area that Pokemon really needs to get their acts together on, because this is just embarrassing on every level. Even though this has been announced already, I could still see a brief mention of Pokemon Concierge getting new episodes. I do doubt there's going to be any footage, but still. It would have been cooler to learn that new episodes were being made during the presentation itself instead of Netflix announcing it early, but I digress. Speaking of different animated series, all of this talk about them has brought me to my next point, which is the potential replacement for Pokemon TV, which is shutting down very, very soon. Like, you can't even download the app anymore on any platform that it was available on. Though the FAQ did tease a replacement would be on the way following the shutdown of Pokemon TV, and I very much believe that we will see the replacement being revealed here. As for how it'll be structured, I could very well see this replacement becoming a paid subscription service, with maybe a free option that would have ads and a limited rotating catalog like what Pokemon TV does with the latter. But I could very well see more being available to users that use a paid tier, with more perks being added to the more expensive tiers like higher video qualities and whatnot. Part of me wishes this would include the Japanese version of each anime series with official subtitles, but I doubt that's going to be the case, which is not that a bummer. That being said though, it wouldn't surprise me one bit either. By this point, we'll probably be at the halfway mark of the presentation or so, and it's usually around here where we start getting content announcements for the mainline games. The only thing regarding the current mainline games that I see right now is some kind of raid event for Scarlet and Violet. There is the mass outbreak event themed to Pokemon looking like Pokeballs, featuring Cantonian Voltorb, Fungus, and a third Pokemon they're teasing, which is just Isolian Voltorb. They didn't exactly do a good job hiding it as the description just gives it away, and you can still see Isolian Voltorb peeking out from behind the graphic. Interestingly, this is going to be occurring before Pokemon Day itself, so maybe we'll get another one? I can see Pikachu and Eevee being featured in mass outbreak events, but who knows. Even so, I think there's a solid chance that there's going to be a raid event in Scarlet Violet for Pokemon Day, and it probably could be the Kanto starters, even though Charizard was already in 7-star raids in the past, or maybe even Mew as a wild card guest. I don't know what else I could see for Scarlet Violet for Pokemon Day outside of those two things. Now, pretty much since last year, people have wanted Gens 1 through 3 to be added to Nintendo Switch Online, especially since Game Boy and Game Boy Advance got added to the service last year. And there's plenty of reasons for wanting that to happen, but personally, while I can see them coming to Switch, but I think it's going to be a standalone release as opposed to being added to NSO. Maybe so that they can add connectivity to Pokemon Home, and unfortunately, not have to worry about adding cloud save support since none of the mainline Pokemon games on Switch support cloud saves. Plus, by doing a standalone release, they could theoretically add more than just the Game Boy games. So that could mean Gens 4 through 7 can be included as well, but that's way less likely. Of course, you'd have to consider the two screens for the DS and 3DS games, but also the general context too. For example, Diamond Pearl and Platinum have the smallest chance of making it since Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl already exist, and Hardcore and Soul Silver not having a good chance of making it either since all of Gen 2 would already be on the Switch in the first place, which would potentially create some redundancy, even though Hardcore and Soul Silver are miles better than Gen 2 anyway. All that being said, if we are seeing any mainline games being re-released, it's just gonna be Gens 1 through 3, which would still be awesome regardless though, as they would likely have not just local wireless multiplayer, but 
maybe even online multiplayer too. Along with being able to still transfer Pokemon from these older games to the newer ones with Pokemon Home. But even so, I still think this is a massive wildcard prediction, as I have no idea how likely or unlikely this even is. So, I think it's best to go into this presentation not even expecting any kind of retro re-release at all. Maybe one of the spin-offs being added to NSO, but that's about it. And I know someone's gonna ask, do you think the shutdown for Pokemon Bank will be announced here too? No, I don't think so. But I have my doubts that Pokemon Bank has much time left to begin with, as the 3DS online servers are shutting down in April, and Pokemon Bank could follow suit shortly after that. Maybe in a year. And finally, we have the biggest announcement of the entire presentation. The main reason why many people tune into these presentations in the first place. The mainline game for this upcoming holiday season. This is where the biggest uncertainty comes into play. As to my understanding and from my experience, there have been no obvious indicators for what this year's big project could end up being. The general consensus is that we are getting a mainline game this year, and that it could be set in either Johto or Unova. The big question is, how? A new Legend style game like Legend Arceus? The Return of Let's Go? A traditional remake? We have no idea. Though, if I had to give my opinion on it, I would bet on Johto, as I feel like it's too soon for Gen 5 remakes as we tend to get one traditional remake per Nintendo handheld. And because of that, and the fact that we're just coming off the heels of Scarlet and Violet, I do not see this year's mainline game being all that massive of a release. The way I see it, if we do get a mainline game set in Johto or Unova, it'll likely just be a filler game to hold us through this year in 2025, while Pokemon starts to make preparations for their 30th anniversary in 2026, which is where we'll likely get the next generation. Some people have voiced concern about a new mainline game releasing this year, especially after all of the flack that Scarlet Violet got for being such a technical mess, and some of those very same people also don't want another traditional slash faithful remake this soon after all of the backlash that Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl got. But for those that want me to give my final say on what I think this year's game could be, I'm honestly not sure. I think a Let's Go style game set in Johto is more likely than a Legend style game set in Yodava. But even then, I'm still not sure, and honestly, that's okay. I want to be surprised by whatever gets revealed this year, as there hasn't been this much uncertainty regarding what the next mainline Pokemon game could be in years. And that's honestly exciting to me. The past couple of Pokemon games have arguably been kind of predictable, with the one real exception being the Legend Arceus, and maybe Scarlet and Violet since those came out arguably way too soon. This time though, there's a bubble of suspense to this year's mainline game, and that has me excited. I want to be excited for whatever gets revealed, but if you don't feel the same way, then that's completely fine too. The only thing I ask is to just be respectful to those that are excited and vice versa. And those were all of my predictions. Despite me saying I don't know what to expect, I still had quite a lot to say, that's for sure. I wanted to try and be as realistic as possible with these predictions, though there's always the chance that this presentation could also have even more variety than I'm expecting, kind of like last February's presentation. But you know what? That's okay too. I'm excited nonetheless, as this Tuesday will clear up most of the questions that we're all having about what Pokemon could be cooking up for this year. That said, I want to hear from you guys. What do you think could be revealed at Tuesday's Pokemon Presents? And what did you think about these predictions? Definitely be sure to let me know about all of that in the comments down below, and don't forget to leave a like on the video and subscribe while you're down there too. With all that said, that's gonna do it for me in this video. I want to thank you all for watching, and until next time, I'll see you guys later. This is District 9 Herder, signing off.
So what's to take away from all this? There's going to be Pokemon content on Tuesday.